Now, as many of you already know, I started off a few years ago as a bit of an air fryer skeptic. And I since have turned into, well, an air fryer evangelist. And you might be wondering why I like this one appliance so much in a kitchen full of options to cook your food. Well, today I'm here to answer that exact question by showing you four unique recipes that utilize the air fryer and will help you transform your workflow in the kitchen so you can produce 15 minute meals with ease, efficiency, and speed all week long. First off, sorry for the overexposed background, but we are officially snowed. Yeah. Huge blizzard just came through the East Coast and I live on Long Island, which got hit pretty bad. We'll take a little tour later. I'll show you some updates on the property, but I first wanna talk about rice. Now, of course, there are multiple ways to get a solid fluffy white rice product and those different techniques, well, they take different amounts of time. My favorite way right here is using a rice cooker. Measure out your rice, I'm using one cup. Wash off the excess starch into the rice cooker with a little more than one cup of water and then set it and forget it. It. and a rice cooker is gonna take around 25 minutes for one cup of rice. Now over here, if you don't have an extra gadget to cook your rice, another great technique. Starts off the same way, wash one cup of rice and then dump it into a saucepan with a little bit over a cup of water. Bring that up to a gentle boil, put a lid on it, reduce the heat to very low and cook it for about 15 minutes. So that whole process is gonna be around 20 minutes, not quite under 15 minutes. Now, if you actually only have 15 minutes, I've showed you this before, but a pressure cooker is gonna be your best bet. Start off the process the exact same way, then into the pressure cooker with a little over a cup of water. Set your pressure cooker for about three to four minutes, then you'll release the steam and you've got great fluffy rice. So you have options depending on the amount of time and the equipment you have, but mastering a good fluffy white rice is essential for these 15 minute meals, and I'm gonna be using it for the first meal. So this first air fryer dish is extremely customizable. You could use any meat you want, any veggies you want. It's really about the sauce and the technique. I'm using some tofu because we've got meat dishes coming later and some Brussels sprouts. That's what I had in my fridge. This snowstorm screwed up some delivery schedules for me this week. So this is very realistic. I'm using what I have. And before we prep our ingredients, I think every single recipe today is gonna start with preheating your air fryer. And if you don't have a preheat button, just crank it up to max, set it for five minutes. So you're gonna want either firm or extra firm tofu for this dish. I'm gonna drain off all that excess water then slice it into a few thick pieces and then use a paper towel to soak up any extra moisture so it gets nice and crispy in the air fryer. And now once it's a bit more dry, I'll chop it into some cubes and then season it with salt and pepper, rolling them around on the board until they are fully coated. Now for the Brussels sprouts, I'm just gonna chop that little end piece off, which then will give me the ability to remove any of the wilted or rotten layers. And when you're dealing with the cabbage family, you just gotta remove layers until it looks pretty like this. And once they're looking nice and fresh. If I've got some larger Brussels sprouts, I'll chop those in half. But the smaller ones, I'll keep whole so they actually cook at a similar time to the tofu chunks. So I should have just salt and peppered everything together. Kind of dumb. I'll add just a tiny bit more salt for those Brussels and then hit it with some oil. Ideally not olive oil because this is an Asian dish, but that's all I have. Toss. You should hear a sizzle because we preheat it. And just spread these out evenly. You never want to overcrowd your air fryer. You won't get that crisp. I'm gonna turn it down to 390 and I'll check it at eight minutes. All right, we are air frying. In the meantime, we've got, you know, eight, 10 minutes. I'm gonna make a quick sauce, really the star of the show. Again, it's the sauce. That can be anything you want in the air fryer getting crispy. Chicken, beef, broccoli, cauliflower. I've made this with everything. So this sauce is very similar to the sauce from about three videos ago, but just different flavors, similar Chinese techniques. But the main player are oranges. And right now it is winter and the oranges are popping off. Okay, so my pan is on a medium low heat. We're getting a little sloppy with it right into the pan. No need to dirty up another bowl. Actually, I'll take this bowl, throw in a compost. So I've got the juice of two oranges here. That's a lot of juice. Rice vinegar for that tang. The orange is the sweet. Rice vinegar is the tang. Then two tablespoons of soy. That's your salty and umami. One tablespoon sesame. That's your aromatic. Now we'll hit it with some more aromatics. Take a microplane and some ginger. And 
just microplane in a little bit of ginger. We don't need much. Oops, I just forgot a little bit of zest of the orange too. It really makes it pop right in there. A little bit of chili if you want it spicy. Chili flakes, just gonna taste it. I was expecting to have to adjust that, but I actually think it's perfect. Final ingredient, essential for a nice glazy thick sauce. We're gonna go one tablespoon of cornstarch. We're just gonna bring that up to temperature, incorporate that cornstarch. Ideally you make a slurry or you run into these issues. <laughs> if I change to a whisk, I should be all right. Idiot, Mike. This is getting a bit thick, so I'm just gonna water it down a little bit. There you go. Let's see what we got here. Eight minutes of air frying, not bad. Tofu starting to get crispy. Brussels sprouts, definitely crispy. To me, we can get that a little crispier. Same temp, just three more minutes and we should be good. All right, here we go. Super crispy Brussels sprouts and those tofu pieces. Nice and crispy. Sesame. Now what's really nice about this dish is how easy it is to just throw whatever you want in the air fryer, make a sauce, coat, boom, you're good. Love the simplicity, but also the lightness of this dish. That looks like heavy Chinese food, but when you think about it, there's no added sugar. Most of the sauce is just orange juice. I found that the air fryer is the best possible way to cook tofu because tofu is a sponge and it can soak up so much oil if you're doing a normal fry, but you don't need that much oil to get it super crispy in the air fryer. This one always is a hit in my house, especially my wife who seems to crave Chinese food when she's pregnant. One more quick note before we move on. Once again, I'm taking one element from each recipe, each of the first three, and bringing them together in some type of Megatron final air fryer dish. For this dish, I'll be snatching some rice. Before we get started on the next recipe, in celebration of the biggest snowstorm in, I don't know, four years. Oh no, broken mash. I'm gonna christen this fireplace. I've used the stove in there many times, but this kitchen fireplace, yet to light it up. Time for a little field trip to the great outdoors. So for those of you following along, remember the tree that was right over there in that section? Big walnut tree? Well now, some of it is here, but most of it is here. So I had someone come over who had a portable mill and he milled the entire tree and we transferred everything over to this part of the property and now everything is drying. Now these pieces are all about two to three inches thick. And generally when you're drying wood outside, the rule of thumb is one inch per year. So I won't actually use these pieces for at least two years. So stay tuned for more updates there. Now let's go check in on the chickens to see how they are holding up in this snowstorm. We're not the only ones snowed in. Now they're officially done molting, which is when they lose their old feathers and they grow back this nice, beautiful coat, which is a good thing because they are nice and warm with those new feathers. It's crazy what a few months will do. When I started the series, which wasn't that long ago, it was like a jungle out here and now we're living in a tundra. So that's that. But before we get into more air fry recipes, I wanted to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, which is Kosori. And I've been using Kosori for many years now, but in today's video, I am debuting doing their new technology, their dual blaze 6.8 quart air fryer. Now, one of the reasons I love Kosori as a brand is because they're always innovating in the air fryer space. And the dual blaze is the only air fryer with dual heating elements on both the bottom and the top of the cooking area, which means shakeless technology, my friends. You just set the temperature, you set the time, you click play, and you can now guarantee that your food is going to cook evenly, which has been a game changer. So if you're interested, click the link below. You can save 15% off uh, Kosori Dual Blaze Air Fryer. And I'll get back inside so we can uh, try out some more recipes. So for dish number two, we are making steak in the air fryer, but not just any old steak. I mean, any old steak sort of turned into something really special with a few other ingredients. For these 15 minute meals, always start off Preheat in your air fryer. So I'm gonna be using some chuck steak today, which is sometimes referred to as the poor man's ribeye, but I love this steak. It's got some great marbling, so it's not gonna dry out in the air fryer and it gets pretty damn tender. Once it's nice and dry, I'm gonna cut it into some rather large, chunky cubes. You want it big enough so they won't dry out in the air fryer, but you still want that surface area so all the sides get crispy. 
me. Now on top of the steak, you can mix in whatever veggies you want. I've got some few shiitakes and some oyster mushrooms that have been sitting in my fridge just a few days too long. And to match those steak cubes, I'll keep these nice and chunky and I'll add the mushies and the steak to a bowl, then hit it with a generous amount of salt and pepper and some oil, then mix it all up until it's evenly coated and ready for some air frying. So just like last dish, we've got our prepped veggies and protein preheated air fryer should hear a sizzle now nice even layer you want room in between Back to the air fryer Let's see what the steak setting okay 400 degrees fahrenheit at eight minutes that's the preset let's just go with that and we'll go from there all right so we are making a steak sandwich if you didn't already know now i've got two beautiful pieces of sourdough here the question is what is that spread gonna be and the answer is anything you want or a better answer is what goes well with steak could do some avocado on there that would be a beautiful steak avocado toast but for me i was feeling something a little different so i'm gonna whip up a quick hummus chickpeas save some aquafaba a whole lot of tahini so we'll start with half a lemon almost forgot the garlic one garlic clove pepper simple as that looking a little rough so i'm gonna add in some of this aquafaba or chickpea liquid Creamy. Mm. Perfect. And perfect timing. The steak is done. So two minutes left. I just want to see what's going on. Woo! We're starting to get some nice crispy bits. Those mushrooms are definitely getting crispy. I would say three more minutes. So that would be a total of like nine to 10 minutes. In the meantime, let me show you something pretty cool. On the other side of the kitchen, this little experiment. So this is in preparation for springtime where I'll be starting a lot of plants inside. This is a three tier grow light system for all my seedlings. But I thought in the meantime, I would do some microgreens. These are all just different salad mixes and they're only about five or six days old. So they're not quite ready, but you definitely snip some for this sandwich. All right, let's see what we got. Oh yeah. See that got pretty caramelized, which I'm happy about. Mushrooms look great. So what I'm going to do is take a plate, empty that on there. Now I'm just making a sandwich for myself. So I'm just going to do one piece of toast and see all that steak, oil, and juice. You want that on there. Rub it in. Actually, I'm going to get under there too. No juice is left behind. There we go. Oh, wow. That's flavor town. Pop that back. I'll just go 380 for about three minutes. In the meantime, we'll slice up some steak. So as you can see here, I sacrificed that medium rare for the caramelization on the crust. It can be difficult in an air fryer to get that perfect medium rare with that caramelization because you're doing a convection cook, but either pull it a minute or two earlier or cut your pieces a little bit bigger, but it's still gonna taste delicious. Bread, kumas. Do that steak with some of those mushrooms. I don't have feta in studio, but I do have some firm goat cheese that I'm just gonna hop over. Finally, extra micro. What's smaller than micro? And a little bit more lemon. Fireside steak sandwich. That is a beauty. For any vegetarians out there, those air fried mushrooms, they could hold up on their own. No problem. That's a great sandwich. Super crispy bread, but light on the inside. Creamy hummus. Tons of flavor in that steak and mushroom combo. And then just a little light micro green on top. To me, very well crafted. Just fantastic. The ingredient I'll be saving for my final dish from this recipe are some of these leftover steak and mushroom chunks. This next one is exciting because I don't cook fish too often on Pro Home Cooks, but I have a beautiful piece of halibut right here and it's getting air fried because we are making fish tacos in 15 minutes. It can be done. You know the game by now. Preheat that air fryer. Now this recipe will work with any piece of fish, but the cooking times will need to be adjusted for the size of the fish. So just keep that in mind. I'm gonna take this piece of halibut and like everything else that goes in the air fryer, you wanna make sure it's nice and dry. I'll give it a sprinkle of salt and I've got a little Mexican spice mix here. That's just gonna add a ton of flavor to this taco. And I'll sprinkle that on all sides until it is well seasoned and fully coated with spice. Okay, so fish, 
season. Like I mentioned before, had some delivery issues. For this dish, I make a poblano salsa, which I absolutely love. Couldn't find poblanos. What I do have here are some massive jalapenos and these, what are these? It's yellow frying peppers, I think. I actually forget the name of those. But this is what I could find and this is gonna have to do for this recipe. So what I'll do is I'll take the preheated air fryer basket, got some avocado spray, spray that. You could just add some oil, put the fish down, pop one of those peppers in there, jalapeno. And then I've got an onion here. Orders. Probably just need three chunks of that. And then just give all that a spray. And then into preheated air fryer. I'm gonna do 408 minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to prepare the salsa while that's cooking. And it's really simple. The base are those roasted peppers. Again, a nice roasted poblano pepper. That's my favorite flavor. This is kind of an experiment at this point, but I'll take one garlic clove few sprigs of cilantro, stems and all. Pop that in. The crustiest lime of all time. That's been sitting in the fridge for like two weeks. You know, it's fine on the inside. Full lime juice, salt, and we'll blend. But that's just to get things started. And then I'll just clean up a little bit while that air fries. Oh yeah, I'm also gonna slice up some avocado to go on the top of these tacos. All right, let's check out the fish. I see 30 seconds. Oh yeah, I think that fish is just about done. You can see some nice char on those peppers, char on the onions. Bring it over. So take the, oh, son of a five second rule. Take the onion, pop that in, remove this fish. Ooh, it's crumbling. Wow, that just fell right off a perfect tender piece. Let me give that a try. Mmm, oh my God, incredible. All right, peppers. No, I really don't have time to remove the skin. If you do have time, let these steam in a bowl and remove that skin for a better product. But what I am doing is just removing most of those seeds. Oh, that jalapeno smells spicy. And that pepper, I think this is actually gonna be a pretty nice combo. Cut. Now we grind up. I forgot one last thing that can be done right now. Take your tortillas. Again, all of that nice juice in there, rub it around, oils, and we'll just get that toasting in the air fryer. 380, three minutes. So I'm gonna give this a taste. Take a look, beautiful. <laughs> oh yeah, even though I removed those seeds, it's still spicy. Now with the poblano pepper, you're not getting nearly as much spice. But that is damn good. You get the sweetness from this guy, the spicy earthy from this guy. Hold on. So for the final recipe, what I'm saving from this dish is a little bit of this salsa. You'll see why in a second. Now to me, this is good. You could serve that right in the taco, but I find that it just needs a little more balance. Like it's too earthy. And the way I smooth it out is a little bit of whole fat yogurt. Just a few scoops of that. And I'm telling you, instant transformation. I'll blend that. Now we've got this creamy, beautiful salsa. Mm with the fish. Oh, it's gonna be perfect. Speaking of, whoa, look what happened. We actually got <laughs> folded in half. That is not the worst thing. I can prop this up. A little creamy salsa in there. Now this fish in the air fryer is just perfect. Look how it just flakes apart. Beautiful halibut. Slice or two of avocado. I've got some sauerkraut here that I made a few months ago at this point. Fish tacos, what do you think? That's creamy, flavorful, and light at the same time, which is what I love in a fish taco. Wow. Now there's so many different directions you could take this dish, but the key is understanding the general concept of multitasking. Getting that piece of fish in the air fryer with additional elements like the roasted peppers for the salsa. If you think about the multitasking, you can get these meals done in a much quicker amount of time. All right, the final dish, very exciting stuff. We've got the rice from dish one, steak and mushrooms, dish two, roasted pepper salsa without the yogurt. So what I'm gonna do is make some enchiladas, basically make a filling out of these three things, stuff it in some tortillas with some cheese, throw it in the air fryer, and also make a sauce with some leftovers that I have. First, I'm gonna take out the steak and mushroom chunks and I'll give them a rough chop until I have a fine enough mixture that will work well for a filling. I'll toss that straight into a bowl, followed by the rice and finally all of that roasted green salsa and just give that a mix. 
So this tastes good, but I think it's just a little dry. Let's see what I got in the fridge. Not much, but what's this? Sambal, no. Peanut sauce, not gonna work. Some tomato, oh, this is, oh. I think this is the chipotle and adobo from the 15 minute meals with Ethan. Oh yeah, smells, <laughs> smells smoky. That's what it needs, just a little bit of that. I just want the actual adobo sauce. I really need the chipotles in there. There's already jalapenos. Let's give it a shot. Mm -hmm. Wow, level up right there. That is perfect. It's gonna be so much better when it's hot. Just gonna pop that in there, create a barrier. Got some Monterey cheese, let it rain. I would assume enough fat will come off this cheese to get these things nice and crispy. Right into the air fryer. 380, let's go 388 minutes. Now, while that's air frying, I actually have the exact ingredients from my leftovers to make the avocado sauce from maybe three videos ago with that chicken salad. This one right here, so simple. It will work great over these enchiladas. Half an avocado, big scoop of yogurt, little bit of cilantro, clove of garlic, another gross lime. <laughs> Taste is fine, I swear. Little bit of oil, sprinkle of salt, a little bit of water. That's incredible flavor in maybe two and a half minutes. All right, we got two minutes left. Let's check what's going on in the air fryer. Oh boy. I mean, could that cheese be any more perfect? Oh yeah. Exactly what I had imagined. The oil has leached out. Everything is perfectly crispy. Those are ready to go. I find the most creative items come from using what you have. And this is a great example of that. It helps you break out of your routine, which then creates unique dishes. Mm. Mm -hmm. I always love a good creamy sauce on enchiladas. I think I could have gone still a little heavier with sauce on the filling. A little bit dry, but really good flavor. That's fun. My wife is gonna love these leftovers. It's a wonderful meal. And the perfect use for an air fryer. Now, if you're interested in purchasing a Kosori air fryer, just check out the link below. I really enjoyed using this dual blaze air fryer. They have other models as well that are all great. If you want more 15 minute meals, click here. And for more air fryer meals, click right here. See you in the next video.